number 25 and we are again in my brother's kitchen is it already 25 i think it's 25 yes wow, we, we have a silver so. jubilee today <laughs> and what are we going to cook yet oh today we're going to uh, make one of our favorite foods in the world it's spaghetti carbonara and of course there's a second dish too that the jens forgot to mention we're going to do a little caprese salad all we need is tomatoes mozzarella and basil balsamico olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. And then, um, of course, the, the main course is uh, a carbonara. Carbonara is a, is a Roman dish, basically, and it's just these, these four basic ingredients. is pancetta, which is a belly fat bacon from Italy. Uh, if you can't find pancetta, you can also take a regular bacon. It just tastes a little different because this one is not smoked and it's cured with a few herbs and salt water, and it has a distinct Italian taste, but maybe you can't get it. I found it already chopped up in, uh, in, in a local grocery store, um, uh, but I think that Boar's Head, I think mm -hmm. they had pancetta. Mm -hmm. It's really good quality, it smells really good. I need five eggs, so I, need, I make, I make a, a carbonara for four people, so I take an egg per person and one extra egg, I have eight ounces of cheese. This is eight ounces of uh, pancetta, about eight, nine ounces of... This is um, pecorino. Pecorino Romana is, um, is a Roman cheese, you know, that just says Romana. So you can buy Romana cheese. And if it just says Romana, it's made out of cow milk. And if it says pecorino, it's sheep. Yeah. So with, with, this is the original sort of, you know, recipe with the sheep, so pecorino Romana. You can find it, and like I said, if you can't find uh, this, this sheep uh, um, uh, cheese or you don't like sheep's cheese, you can always take also Parmesan, which is a little less tangy, or you can take uh, uh, Romano. just Romano. Yeah. But this would be the original recipe. And then I have a pound of spaghetti and we need some black pepper and that, that's, all the, that's all it takes. And of course, a little bit of salt for the water for the, for the spaghetti, or just maybe a little, just a pinch. Mm -hmm. For the caprese. All we do is we take our tomatoes and we slice them. But first, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with the mozzarella. Already, already, of course, you know, wash. You wash, 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 yes. wash, wash the... You know, and and make the slices not too thick. This is why we don't buy sliced mozzarella. We make it so like a little thinner. Victorinox knife. Um, these uh, are serrated. They make make cutting tomatoes really easy. And again, not not too thick, but whole slices like that. Well, you're a big chef, that would be perfect too, right? Yeah, it would work. But you know, it's it's like I said, I'm I'm always cautious about cutting myself, and that way. You remember that day when you when you made what, what kind of soup did you make? And you pea soup. Pea soup, and you put your fingers. No, in... it did not. <laughs> it was I used the, I used the puree, uh, you know, a bay mix, you know, one of these puree things that they puree your soup with. And one when, when I um, it was a battery operated one, and when I washed this thing up and I held it under water, my finger was in there, and I cut off a good part of my tip of my index finger and three days later we flew out and played this played a festival in the, what was it Oregon or something this big garage oh yeah I remember wow. and, yeah that was kind of it reminded me of old times when I was a butcher you know how many times we played and my, my fingers were just 
been made. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we, had, we were actually quite lucky in our life. You know, once I was, uh, I was cutting on, around on a uh, chimney, you know, a metal chimney, you know, stove, stove kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Our friend Lodi was here and I cut so deep in my finger. You know exactly where the finger pick hits. You can still see this big scar going through. And uh, it took months to get better, actually. You know, mm -hmm. to really just feel, I, I was numb, I couldn't feel anything. And it helped because I could play longer without hurting. <laughs> so, now I've got, I got everything cut. Now I can start just arranging it here on the plate. Hey, Uwe, why is it called the most Italian dish? Because it's got all three Italian colors on it from the, from the Italian flag. <laughs> red, red, the green is gonna go, go on top after, after we're done. Well, while you do that, I could actually grate the cheese. Uh huh. Yes. In Italy, I have lots of friends in Italy, uh, fortunately, uh, because uh, I always learn a lot when I go to it Italy. Um, and, you know, my friend Massimo, his mother was one of, one of these, you know, people who really cook all year, every day, from morning till evening, have a plan, know what they're doing. And for Massimo, he married a woman from Germany and his mother, of course, was not very happy. And he had to go to Germany, uh, you know, with her to, for visits and such. And he would come to me and he'd say, Jens, the food, the food is terrible. <laughs> and Massimo, of course, he couldn't cook. No. He's an Italian man, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> Logan? No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, okay. How would you do it? No, it's okay. Stand him up? No, it's okay. Whatever you feel like you're doing, Logan, it's okay. So, uh, anyway, Italians are very particular with their food. They, they, they don't, they're not funny about it, you know? I mean, either you do it right or you don't. That's why I'm actually quite nervous today. Because all my friend, Italian friends are going to watch it. Mm, nah, I don't know. Because I had this discussion you know, with Massimo, you know, I was making him a carbonara, like you make it in Switzerland, which is a complete different dish, really. And he said, oh, I like it. It was good, but it was not carbonara. And I said, why not? This is how everybody makes carbonara. Yeah, but this is not carbonara. So I, I, I lost that argument, <laughs> even though I couldn't admit it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uwe, the caprese chef. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't. I usually I, see. Uh, Jens, Jens told me to you cut, to cut the mozzarella in half, which I usually don't do. You know, I usually just use the mozzarella oh, okay. whole slices. That's you want all. another piece of mo mozzarella? No, oh, that's plenty for people. Jens. It takes a lot of muscle here. So. Oh, you caprese. Yeah, I caprese. Who is caprese? So, how about that? Put some basil on top of it. Yeah, you want to see that it's basil there. Yeah. So few smaller ones on here, and a little basil around it. Okay. I'm almost done here. I could have cheated and taken the shell off. It's the basil that makes this smell so good. Does that look alright, Ian? What do you think? Salt. And some fresh 
transfer. Put the, the spaghetti water on in a big pot, and I I, I use this, this this pan here because we're gonna have the spaghetti afterwards right in here, and the pancetta uh, I put in here. I usually when you if you buy pancetta usually it's just a, a piece it looks like this, and then you have to cut slices and sort of make a little longer pieces, not real cubes like this. But this is okay. This works. I think this works just fine. So. Uh, always you have to start off with a, a low temperature because uh, we want the, the fat to get out of the pancetta and sort of you know start to get out of the, the bacon um, so we don't want to fry it too much it has to fry at the end but not start off with a lower temperature so it can slowly so at the same time as the as the spaghetti water will do, will do the trick we can just let it sit there and do its thing did you say, how does it look? He looks lovely. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> no, this is, when we, when we uh, sit around the table and play music, we don't invent new music most of the time. We just play something that is familiar and feels good, just like the food that we cook. I mean, we even talk about it, just sort of play, you know what? Yeah. Like, this is one of my favorite ones, uh, one of the favorite instruments that you ever wrote. Oh, it's, really? It's, yeah, it's definitely. And it reminds me of that time when you did your solo series down in, down in Italy, right? And yes, you know, because you you wrote so much music, and then Massimo invited you to do the to do your solo record in in Milan, and, and you invited me to play along with that, and, and Tristan, and we set up the studio. And you, oh, we had so many great times in Italy. Italy. It's unbelievable. Uh, Italy was just something else. Remember Italy. Milan, the the food. Oh, oh God. God. It's just the food. You know, there's a reason why I, you know I love food, and it, Italians love food, so I was really at home in Italy all the time just for that. But then the, all the other things, you know. I mean. First time I came to Milan with Jens in the morning was was um, in we, we got stuck in traffic at around seven o'clock in the morning in one big roundabout. Where it was like I don't know the, the, the markings on the roads, you know, where the cars should supposed to. They're just suggestions. <laughs> and, you know, the ca cars are smaller. Than, it was just what a chaos that was. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was amazing. And then we went to the Duomo and we did all sorts of nice things over there, right? And then, but it's all, all because of your music, it's all because of this beautiful music that you write, you know. And this thing is called the mystical.
like that caprese lips. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it sizzling. I don't, you usually put the caprese a little flatter, right? Yeah, 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 yeah sort of yeah. spread it out. It doesn't matter, it's all good, it's all perfect. Pancetta is, is sort of sweating, starting to sweat, but you can still see there's lots of fat. So we just let it, let it be because we want more of that fat to be liquidized. So we can start actually with the, with the crema. So we don't need is these, these eggs in here. Now, there's people who say that they um, that there's people who say that they use uh, just the egg yolk, but I think in most recipes, especially you know, it's it's not a expensive dish. It's it used to be a poor man's kitchen in in uh, in Rome, so I don't think that they would waste anything really, you know. And, uh, so, you see the most uh, families, they would take the entire egg. Or maybe just add one egg yolk, you know, extra instead of the whole egg that I just did. So, and then we add the cheese. And this creates this quite a thick paste, but we're going to add some spaghetti water later. And so what we're going to do with seasoning is all to put some uh, all pepper, just pepper, no salt, because in the cheese there's enough salt really. It makes it quite salty. But you can be generous with the pepper, you know, you like uh, pepper in this dish. You said that uh, that the pancetta smells a lot like actually, you know, like your grandma's house. And I think you know when I smell it like this, it actually does smell a lot like country ham. Yes. But, you know, but country ham is a lot leaner most of the time than pancetta. But I heard you know some Italian chefs say that they put you know the, the, the pancettas should be very greasy, but it's not. They add a little bit of olive oil to fry it, you know. But so the water is boiling, so I put the salt in and the spaghetti. Already, no? Yes. Ah. And because it's such a... Uh, so, I just put it on 10 minutes. And I don't have to worry, so I just make sure they don't stick together too much. i 
to eat in the middle of the night, you know, they have actually a special name for it that I forgot, you know, for all these midnight dishes, you know, like one of the, the garlic, just oil spaghetti as a typical midnight dish in Italy. And we went, when it's played, you know, what we played in Genoa for the bluegrass party, you know, yeah, that, 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 that the red wine organizers. And of course they served us, you know, their real pesto because pesto, pesto is from Genoa. And um, so Martino's wife, you know, she made, Unbelievable pesto, you know, and we were in the kitchen. It was just really, really good. And so after the dinner, you know, we went and played a concert, you know, and no, it was actually the next day, we played a concert. And uh, after the show it was already 12 o'clock at night or sometime, you know, we would drive to a little restaurant and we barely had room, you know, in this little restaurant. And Greg Deering and Janet Deering were all together, and Joel, and, you know, and everybody, and Bernie Valuti, and we were, in this little restaurant, and I think we ate till about four o'clock in the morning. And they would bring one dish after the other, you know, and he would play music in there, and the cellist was there, we played some Bach, you know, and I mean, we had, we had so much fun. What a party that was. But it's in the middle of the night, somewhere in Milan, you know, they cook, uh, they cook up a storm, you know, for hours, really, literally. And remember Zazana? It, Italy is hot. And they don't have air conditioners usually. And if they have an air conditioner, it's maybe in the in their bedroom, little window unit or something like that to make it bearable to sleep. And when it gets really hot and everything during the day, nobody really wants to eat. And that's uh, and the nights are when every everything comes alive. It's really uh, we Jens had a friend out in, uh, in Milano Tre, which was a, a part of Milan that was built, I think I guess in the 50s and 60s, really large, tall. Buildings and oh, no, no, that, that's, that was different. Uwe. That was not Milano Tre. Milano Tre was a new, yeah. new complex. Well, but but that, that was it was just absolutely amazing in the sense that when we got there, it was still a little early. But then the 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 the, 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 the later it got, the more alive this place came. And, yeah. and by the time we left around, what was it, two or something like that? <laughs> it, was, it was really hopping and bopping. Yeah, it's just it was, it was, the middle of the week. Like, everybody was loud. Hawk cars honking, everybody could be. It was amazing, you know? Okay, what you got here? So actually, the, now you can see that the fat and the pancetta really left the pancetta, you know? And the pancetta is sort of a little bit golden brown, so that's perfect, we don't want to burn it. And so I put some spaghetti water in here. Uh, it's just sort of, I don't burn the pancetta anymore. And then I take some spaghetti water and put it into this crema here. And then, uh, Hard to do with one hand, you know. Actually, you should um, because we don't want to make scrambled eggs, you know, with the, with the heat. But with this little, see, it becomes more. Mm. 
<laughs> so we have to take the spaghetti out. Don't worry about the, the water coming along with it, you know. Because now, they say in Italy, now the spaghetti is alive. If you drain it and then try to put sauce over it, they say you're trying to vit vitalize something you just killed. You know, so, um, of course, I drain them a lot of times. But, uh, so, now. And I have to turn the temperature off and let it cool just a little bit. Because I don't have a gas stove, if I want the temperature to be gone, I have to really take it off the stove, you know. With a gas stove, that's easier to cook, basically, you know, because you can just control the heat so much better. I think I still have a little bit more of this water. And now, I put this... I have to wait, maybe just a little bit. It's still a little hot. You know what, maybe I'll do this over. And I just have to be careful if I if I put the eggs in too fast, they can become scrambled eggs, and I just don't want that. So, but I think now we're we're in a, in a, in a safe zone. I can put this cheese egg mix in here. And now, and it's still not watery enough, so I have to put some more of this to get water in here. to be impatient and just watch the sauce how it thickens slowly a little bit and once it becomes creamy and not watery it starts then it starts to be turn up the heat a little bit and it's gonna be ready to eat okay now we can see that now stir it, a while, stir it a while, it becomes real creamy over here. It's not, it's not liquid anymore. And that's when the spaghetti are good. And then, you know, let's put it on a plate. Um, real chefs, they use a fork and they pile it up like, uh, like a, a little uh, piece of art, but I'm not gonna do this because I'm hungry. And you, you have to try this. Yes. Ah, <sighs> done. All right. <sighs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Try. Right. Ah, I'm hungry. I want to eat too. What do you think? Here we go. Later. Oh yeah. A little bit of lemonade. Of course, you know, red wine it's would good. be a lot better, but. I have to grab and take the kids from school, so but I can have the rest. No, 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 that's all good. Oh. Try it over mm, here. Because, James, you know this is my favorite spaghetti, right? Well, I don't so, know. Let's see if, if, it, turned, see if, it, turned out, if it turned out, if it turned out, okay.
Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. This is perfect. That is so good. You like it? Mm -hmm. Creamy. Oh wow. I have eggs and cheese. That's just cheese. What else do you need? And bacon. Bacon makes everything better. <laughs> do we still have some of those t-shirts left? No, we're sold out. Are we going to make any new ones? No, huh? We've been talking about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Guantanamo. Guantanamo. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> I'm hungry. I want to eat too. <laughs> <laughs> How's the caprese? Is it good? The caprese is perfect. Mm. Mm. We don't have much time to say goodbye because we have to eat our spaghetti. Yes, I as can't you can understand. Well, thank you for watching. Spaghetti is such a traditional thing to do late in the evening in Switzerland as well. You know, how many times have you had spaghetti when we come home from a show? Yes, I know. And I just, shouldn't. I should not have had. But in Italy, they also eat that for breakfast, and I think yeah. I'm going to start doing that. And you know, Jens threw me a, and Krista they threw me a 60th birthday party just a few weeks ago, and of course, when the party was over, what comes out is. Spaghetti. It was just it's such a traditional, wonderful thing. <laughs> they thought maybe we would do some spaghetti on the show. Yes, absolutely. We we'll see you all next week again. Yes. Thank you so much. You all take care. Bye bye. You know, when I found out we're going to do carbonara, I went an extra 40, by 40 minutes onto my treadmill just to burn an extra 400, 500 calories. You know, this is just really, I mean, I needed to be fit for the day. <laughs>